Look at the beautiful star. It reminds me of you, darling. Daddy, that's not a star, it's a bird. Well, if it is a star, it's a bright one. And if combined with another star, it could be even brighter. Oh yes, and make many more stars, or descendants of Abraham. Mother, I know how you think. When you mention a possibility for the millionth time, you think it will come true. I'm just hoping suitor number 15 can make his way by today. Mother, it's not fair. John is your friend. He is simply dazzled by the idea that grandfather was the first vice president of Texas. He is a widower. And he has money. And that, no. I've given him an emphatic no. I think somebody's here. Oh, Mr. Williams! Why don't you come on up? My favorite family I'll account for this afternoon. Mary and Penny and Cy and I'm feeling spirit. Adina, Mr. Williams told me yesterday that he wrote a poem. I'm afraid my mind is a little too distracted to follow Mr. Williams by verses this evening. You have such a bill of communication. Don't let me abuse my mother. Perhaps I can come back some other time. You will do that. Mr. Williams, a businessman like you, we're just so grateful to have you beautify our thoughts. And we're extremely excited to hear your poem tomorrow. And as for Gina, well, she will give you her honest opinion. Adina, the joys of consecrated life are great. I do feel consecrated, Sister Flavine. Without taking the vow of the Holy Order? Sister Flavine, my father is dying. The world of my grandfather Lorenzo is dying. I have a debt to repay to the whole tradition that has made my life possible. God made your life possible. I know, I know. You are a great teacher. The children love you, the church needs you, and if you just concentrate yourself, then you'll be able to. Sister Flavine, you're overwhelming me. I cannot say no, but neither can I say yes. Oh, help me bear the truth with unselfish love. Oh, moderate drinker, why do you show the life? Why do you transmit the alcoholic tin to your offspring? Why do you pollute the helpless babe, profaning motherhood, casting off that throat of self-control, just staying the one who wants only one day to rise up and call you blessed? John, you are such an incredible poet and an amazing friend. Thank you, I think you're the type of man that a woman can trust her whole life and soul with. Adina, what do you think? I think, Mr. Williams, there is a false smell of drama, perhaps some poisonous mentality, Jesus, Paul, and our first folks want to wine. Adina, you are so critical of others. What about your own desire for coffee? Mr. Williams is in the spirit of the loss for temperance and perfection that is sweeping the nation. You can't always try to preserve the past. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord be with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed be the fruits of your womb, Jesus, Holy Mother, Mother of God. Be with us sinners on behalf of our death. I can't do this. I can't. I can't do this. This reminds me too much of my two sons. Adina. Adina. He wants Adina. Augustine, why do you want Adina? Just tell me. I have to tell her. I think I know why Adina is an Austin. It's because of a conversation these two had. Augustine, I'm here. And Adina's here in spirit. Good morning. Like this. That is so wrong what you said last night. You know, you once described the twin sisters, the two canons from Cincinnati, using the Battle of San Jacinto as handsome. Yet, you never described the men who court you as handsome. Mary, I think the difference between you and I is that you spend more time thinking about men, whereas I spend more time thinking about, well, what should be most glorious. Well, Adina, the only problem is, I don't think you can marry what's most glorious. Mary, I have to tell you something I have not shared with anyone. Is it something about our family land? Mary, I have made a firm resolve. A virgin have always been and shall remain forever. 
No earthly love shall come between my God and I. No, never. Sister, why are you creating your own jail? Does mom know about this? No, not yet. I know she is terribly worried about finances and even regards my latest friend John as the answer to all her prayers. Are you joining the convent? I joined this organization back in 1889 with Adina. We've always been proud Texans. Since we started with the state chapter, certain secretaries in Houston have been handpicking me to death. They want me to prove that my grandfather was an early citizen of the Lone Star Republic. And the truth is that he was an Akadoshis and they kicked him off his land. Miss Goodaway, the state organization does not oppose you women from being patriotic. But it's in the name the Daughters of the Republic of Texas that y'all are descendants from the original Lone Star Texans. But Carrie, they accepted us in and they accepted our dues and now they want to tighten the requirements? Want and proof is not a wanton project. At least not in my books. It is when you're mixed. Spanish. There must be records. I'm telling you that if they were really to really kick up to their land in Nacogdoches. Women, let's pause a little bit here. It's my fault. We started before the DRT, and I should have been more careful when we decided to join our state association. Look here, Dina. It looks like you got a letter from Oran Rivers. That's Oran Roberts, our Texas governor. He is answering my request. Here, read it. Dear Mrs. Zavala, I regret the long lapse. It has taken me to answer your letters. I'm at the age where time is more precious than gold. Also, it was heartening to meet you formally at the first meeting of the Texas State Historical Association in Austin this past February. Thank God for the two lanterns that allowed us to see. Our regards to you for your attendance at that meeting. My congratulations to you for your support of that foremost patriotic upholder of liberty, the Daughters of the Confederate States of America. God bless the memory of your father on the scene. He fought for that noble cause. I also am a great admirer of your grandfather Lorenzo de Savannah. This generation also risked their lives against a tyrant who, to assure the blessings of freedom. As for your family's land case, there was a law in the mirror of the Marcus that revoked the payday you have in mind. I am sorry to tell you this, but I must advise such a charming young lady as yourself that you would do best to contemplate your future family rather than your past one. Certainly, there must be a very eligible suitor for you. If you will allow me the certain rights to trespass on your patience, I vow to remain forever. Your most dutiful servant, Oron Milo Collins. I was even born and lived my early years next to the great battlefield of San Jacinto, where the dictator Santa Anna was defeated by Sam Houston and many of our ancestors. My father's recent will shows that we might even have land there. Yes, it was San Jacinto that achieved the independence of Texas. But sisters, it is the Alamo here in San Antonio that we must truly sanctify. We will teach future generations to glorify this defeat. We will glorify self-sacrifice. Adina, dear, are we still living in Texas? It was the Alamo's 50th birthday and no one did anything to celebrate. I'm hearing some very strange things. This of all was the purchase of uh, the long barracks, not to demolish it, but to celebrate it for its defeat. My God, this of all. Are we to buy a whole series of crumbling Spanish buildings just to put crucifixes all on the inside? Why don't we paint all the inside of these buildings blood red? Or let's go the full way and make it all Mexican Day of the Dead with crucifixes, with Spanish uh, sugar skulls, and pagan altars.
used every single last coin that they had in order to get that chapel and Long Barrack built. I, for one, vow to help the to secure the Long Barrack and the former convent, the place where the Alamo's right defenders actually died. Our sacrifice will be but a routine chore compared to those of our ancestors. We need a great Alamo memorial composed of both the Barrack and the chapel. MJ, can I ask you to tell us all of you? Thank you, Miss Kelly, Miss Goodwin. I do know that my husband is not a very sentimental person, but as a San Antonio businessman, he is interested in the goals that Adina has discussed. And as you know, he has contributed a good deal. Any democratic country taking thousands of land claims due to educated landfitters with guns, well, it's going to have a lot of decision. It's the same old thing. Texans hate their past, especially the great Spanish past. But once they get rid of their recent past, they want to get rid of their distant past. And they'll get end up with what they deserve. Anarchy. Well, thanks for the lecture, Mr. New Yorker. But what does that mean for my family? Your family? Am I not your uncle? Henry, you know very well you want to have uncle or something like that. Look, you're asking for my help. Why do you continue to regard my mother as a common prostitute? My dearest young bride Loretta, I earnestly hope my trip here to San Antonio is worth it. My father's accident late in life to have me out of the web block has led me to other mishaps. It seems he paid for my education so I could sort out his unusual dealings. My cousin Ariana thinks she has a lot of land coming to her. She might, but we could actually qualify for much of it. Even if we don't win it, my bill for these services probably will vex her. Yes, I would like to leave this for a little place, but there must have been something more for Texas second vice president. And how illegitimate I might have been, I am the male heir who most deserves it. Oh, 
Length spaces plus up to rise, uh, payment options, very professional. I shall take a moment and study it. If the bears are our understanding, I shall sign it. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Schmelzer. Now here's a plan which we have embossed and put in a frame that you might take part of the great track of patriotism. Dear Ms. Driscoll, Daughters of the Republic of Texas refer to you as an outstanding Texas patriot. No wonder. Your direct ancestors, whose spirit lives in you yet, demonstrated a sublime rank of legendary courage. We, the members of the San Antonio chapter of the Daughters of the Texas Revolution, have resolved to sanctify the Alamo. But the enclosed photographs show our predicament. The Schmelter grocery is overwhelming this sacred site. We therefore must buy when the grocer Ugo Schmelter sells. The store has a gaudy superstructure and sign over the long barrack. This robs the scenic chapel of its beauty and value. Ms. Driscoll, we beg you, help us acquire the Schmelter building. Our chapter has raised $20,000. I will stake my presidency to empty that entire purse at the project. If you can help us, we will work unremittingly to reimburse you. Surely the state or someone will grasp what has become a patriotic necessity. Dear Miss Zavala, I received your letter after making stops at the Roman Porta Nigra in Trier and the Medici Palace in Florence. Your goal to visually dramatize the Alamo is a noble desire. Now, I cannot be frivolous with my family's estate. The spirit of commercial avarice too often corrupts the intentions of charity. Nor am I convinced that the Schmelzer Long Barrack deserves preservation. The stone chapel definitely needs to be set apart. I might suggest a larger park around the chapel with rare flowers and fruit trees, providing blossoms that would commemorate the lives of Texas patriots through the months of the calendar and in the years to come. Dina, I'm amazing to run into you here, and in front of my favorite site, too. Oh, John, imagine seeing you here. I was just thinking how pleasant it would be to... Oh, sorry. I've been waiting for Miss Driscoll. I believe I can see her now. See you later, John. I see you. I think you've made her. Hey, Miss Driscoll. Hey, Miss Driscoll. Yes, Miss Zavala. How nice to meet you here. There seem to be no benches. Still so unlike parents. Fathers fought with Sam Houston in the Battle of San Jacinto, and my fiance Henry Severe is on the Texas legislature. I feel like I'm about to paint with joy. You, Miss Driscoll, are the answer to my most fervent prayer. What do you mean? I mean that if my life can serve to preserve this cradle of sacrifice, that is, the twin buildings of the Alamo, the chapel, and the long barrack, it will be well spent. You, Miss Driscoll, have the patriotism and the assets to close the Schmilty buyout. Believe me, I will labor for the rest of my life to make sure you're, you are paid back in full. What made you come to this revolution? It's just the love and sacrifice is the highest good. It is what our Savior did. It is what our forefathers at the Alamo did. That is nothing less than a shrine of our most noble virtue. Yes, I only wish we knew more of its history. For example, what did the non-combatant women, such as Juana Milton, the lady with the umbrella she's known, and um, Julia Esparta and Maria Esparta, pardon me. What did they think? We only get Susanna Dickinson's say on it. I've always wondered about Claudia and Anastasia and her three daughters. Someone, someone else have I have a theory that she is from the same family who contributed liberally to the Alamo. My, I am impressed. 
And I'm so impressed with you, Miss Driscoll. I hear that you're a writer, working on the story of the Alma, just as I am. In fact, I know your mother's name is Julia, and so is mine. And you're a Roman Catholic, and I am too. Governor Lanham, if I may ask, I know you came to Texas after the Civil War. Did you first settle in Waterford, New Fort Worth? Well, when I first came to Texas, a young duck about 40 years ago, I had just married Sarah. She was pretty as a peach. Nineteen of us, mind you, been moved from South Carolina on old farmer's wagons. For two years, I tend to the switch in the spelling. The schoolhouse near Clarksville, Texas, in Red River County. Woo! The scars were blow for your feathers. Then we moved to Weatherford, where I studied law and first entered politics. You know, Miss Zavala here has also taught school in town near Dallas. Oh, well, that reminds me of another story. Governor, um, the real point in this meeting is can the state reimburse us? My fiance has assured me that the state representative of Santa Fe Matt Johnson will spearhead a bill to cover costs. We are about to purchase something that the state desperately needs. And while we have the $85,000 to cover the it's about so lot of money. What do you think? Shout out to the people who give me a nickname of Sunset Hotter. But from the moment on which I have you my experience, I'm so touching as by you, Mr. Small. And you take this ball. As stars of the Confederacy, you have worked to ensure that the torch of liberty continues to shine. The exceptions you both have of your own particular families for each right it was the most sublime awareness known to the family of Cato in the Roman times, or the Davidic dynasty in Jerusalem. At the same time, the knowledge that you two ladies have the Alma of the and convinced that the entire male race. Ms. Driscoll, on behalf of the state of Texas, I wish to heartily assure you, and you too, Medina, that you can, for the time being, purchase the land around the Alamo Chapel with of Sam gift for the edification of future generations of Texans. I will make two promises. The first is I will work to ensure that the state reimburses you with these. Six to five thousand dollars for this impressive act. The second, the second, is that I will support the motion that the organization you lead, the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, have exclusive rights to administer the site. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate your bold promises and kindest regards. I do know, however, that there is a twenty thousand dollar difference between what we're about to pay and what you're promising to give us back. That doesn't include the seven thousand five hundred dollar option fee that I have absorbed and will gladly absorb for the sake of Texas. This is something that the state desperately needs, and both my husband and Mr. Johnson have assured me that the state has the $85,000 needed to cover the acquisition. Well, this is true, Mr. Scott, and I'm glad you brought it up. And I, we sometimes must labor with the truth. I've learned that our son's discretion and patriotic judgment as public servants must be done to requisition. We cannot expect the poor farmers of Texas to comprehend the bombastic passwords of our cities. But it's say that even the figure of 65,000 sounds alien to the ears of most. Even this figure is a brave offer, and only, only due to unexpected savings. So now, Miss Driscoll, is this agreeable? Yes, good. I'm delighted to hear that, Mr. Driscoll. As a representative of Texans everywhere, I thank you for your abiding patriotism. This agreement, I'm sure, will send to people's minds the spirit of sacrifice which you have so nobly executed. Governor Lanham, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you and I pray to God for your abiding love for the fortune. Oh, it's so good to meet you, Grandma of Texas, first class president. Thank you and your San Antonio for your financial contribution. Such a coward. Oh, Clara, I know what you mean. I just saw my organization's cash reserves vanish. And we will definitely strain to keep our promise to split the difference with you on the extra cost. 
but I can hardly constrain the song in my heart. That one is ours to rear and treasure. Of course, without your resources and influence, this wondrous day, this magnificent meeting could never have occurred. The state of Texas has always revealed a great side of the outcome. But in this new century, our veneration impels us to beautify this fabled ground. The new bill passed by the legislature, with my full support, reaffirms our commitment. We have promised to reimburse our patriotic benefactor, Ms. Claire Driscoll, and the Dollars of the Republic of Texas, six to five thousand dollars for buying the land adjacent to the Alamo. All should know that the state rarely could have paid the nine two thousand five hundred dollars it actually cost to secure the site. We have spent much, but we have saved much. We mean always to conduct the affairs of our state in an economical manner. Finally, the bill entrusts the beauty of this great state to our state's greatest managers of beauty, our fair woman. The daughters of the Republic of Texas, of which our benefactor, Ms. Claire Driscoll, is a member of, will exercise custodial rights. Could we clarify this, Governor? Are we saying the state of Texas is entrusting the alum to a single group of ladies for generations to come? Gentlemen. If I had not been convinced by the astounding knowledge, patriotism, and resources of these women, I never would have supported the thing. Governor, I've heard it said that the state has already invested in the San Francisco battlefield, and it was there that the 50th anniversary of a great revolution was to be celebrated. Are we switching priorities as a state? Why this sudden infatuation with that one? Texans espouse liberty as no other people on this earth. We constantly renew our acquaintanceship with this ideal. Both the vows of the Alamo and San Jacinto commemorate our sacred passion. One final comment, Governor. Some Confederate veteran groups object to such expenditures by the state to commemorate the minor defeats of Red Alamo. The Alamo was a token of greater glory. When we sow with blood for liberty, the harvest is always great. The Alamo was the most important offering that taught these truths for the wars to come. Even defeats on behalf of liberty established later advantages. Clara, you have done more for the state of Texas than anyone else in our history. Thank you, Cornelia. I've gotten a lot of grief about this. The only problem is... Okay, so we now administer the site. That's wonderful. But the only group in place to do this now is... You know the San Antonio chapter and the Daughters of the Republic of Texas is very different. They had that long wooden savant and all their scribblings just make me so... Well, you know that days of all the water for Well, Cornelia, frankly, you shouldn't blame me. I made it possible to buy the land around the Alamo by absorbing the auction costs. That land will make it a wonderful site, but that will also be the Houston woman a lot of competition for state priorities. No, Clara, you're fabulous. All the Houston ladies just laud over your benefactions. They don't mind looking after the San Jacinto project while you give other projects to ladies elsewhere. What's the problem then? I think what we all resent is the propaganda that we've been hearing. The leader of the San Antonio chapter is trying to bring women in whose ancestry might have been on the other side into our organization? How are we supposed to honor our ancestors when we have a leader in our midst? And plus she wants to talk about all this Spanish mission history and San Antonio stuff. I mean, all, all it is is just Franciscan missions, old bells, and what a priest did or didn't do. San Antonio chapter just seems on the verge of just celebrating Spanish culture and just forgetting completely about the defeat of our ancestors. I don't know if you're quite right about that, Cornelia, but Miss Savala is quite a character. What's the most interesting thing about her is her apparent fascination with death. She constantly talks about, like you said, old Spanish stuff.
What is she trying to make me do? She wants me to reserve the long barrack. After the entire schmelzer breaker bracket is destroyed. And after all that I've done to help this part of the Why does she want you to preserve that disgusting woman? Something about how the real blood of the Alamo was shed there. Really, I think it's her only bow at this You know, she's pledged to stay the file. I think she also wants to use the side to convert people to Catholicism. Exactly what are we going to do? She's taking over the project you've sacrificed so much for. Well, I can't stay in San Antonio and administer the site, but I do have an idea. The sleeping car, Florence. The sleeping car is a great invention for modern women. So, well, when a woman has to travel by day, she has to deal with a lot of condescending train talking. But with the sleeping car, she avoids all that. Just walk in the compartment, wake up in a new city, explore, shop, oh. What would your fiance say if you I think we're attention. Well, it isn't amazing to see our fine Texas women here in Cincinnati. Yes, you are the governor's assistant. How nice to see you again. Just what is my name? Mr. Escobar. Lawrence Eager, San Antonio. Say, if you're here in Cincinnati alone, why don't I take this opportunity to escort you all around town? That will not be necessary, uh, though you are a wonderful gentleman to suggest this. Well, I wouldn't want the two most illustrious ladies of Texas to be barraged by some drummer or drunk. <laughs> you never know what might happen in such a godless northern city. Come, sir, your gallantry is wonderful, but we are in no need of such service. Yes, it really is unnecessary. Well, you know, I don't find it at all a waste of time to this Thank you, kind sir. And now I would like to introduce someone who I know all of you love just as much as I do, our savior of the Alamo, Clara Driscoll. Thank you ladies, thank you. Thank you so much for your support and that of Governor Landham as we consider new ways to properly dedicate the Alamo. I know that my concerns for beauty and patriotism are shared throughout the state and therefore let me be bold. I propose that we tear up the long barrack, that hideous, disgusting, rat-infested structure purchased from the grocer, Hugo Schmelzer. This will give us the opportunity to offset the beautiful chapel with a beautiful park. I am envisioning a place of tranquil beauty filled with swaying palms and tropical verdure, and a new structure as well. 
Spanish design, an arched walkway, draped with ivy, something just as venerable as the nearby Alamo. After one could never allow the long barrier to be torn down. It, after all, was baptized by the blood of our heroic ancestors. Ladies, please do not get out of order. The chair will recognize those who wish to speak. Now, I see Cornelia's hand raised. Thank you, Miss Jones, Madam Chairman. I, for one, am excited to be here. Did you all know Miss Jones is the president of Texas's last excuse me, the wife of Texas's last president, Anson Jones. I think we should all give her a round of applause. <laughs> now, I would like to speak of the matter at hand. We are all so beholden to you, Ms. Driscoll, for your act of patriotism in diverting your own personal resources for this project. It is such an exciting act of charity that our organization has never experienced before. So, with that said, I must express my fondest wishes that we go ahead with your plan. Ladies, that does it with the old business. Now to our new business. We have an exciting new development, and I would like Ms. Florence to explain. I would like to announce the formation of a new chapter, the DRT Mission Chapter of San Antonio. We met just but two weeks ago, but we represent 15 patriotic ladies eager with Miss Discroll's blessing for a new side of the Alamo. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful news. Such ladies should be commended. Wait, why wasn't our San Antonio chapter developed informed of this development? This is outrageous. This is not outrageous. Is this true? Is this what you wanted? Well, of course it is. Why would I enable the DRT with the idea that you'd be doing all the work yourself? My friend Florence and her friend and I have discussed to have figured out all details. I think you may have forgotten the fact, however, that the Mayor San Antonio has already given me the keys, and we have already begun to administer this site. Besides, we the women of the Days of All chapter already raised money for this privilege, Miss Driscoll. We certainly acknowledge that the land around this Meltzer project could not have been purchased without you. But it is to my understanding that our chapter spent over $10,000 for this project. We helped secure that purchase too. Now listen, this is not something that we need to be discussing at this time. It's Except not, it kind of is. It's, it's that big, big of a deal. It's not $10,000 is, is a lot of money. Dina De Zavala get control over the keys. No matter, Clara. Mary Jones has assured me. Constitutionally, the executive committee has complete control over all state DRT projects. That is, as long as nothing comes about the plenary meetings. And since our last one yielded nothing but chaos, everything shall go through the executive committee. Mary Jones has assured me whatever you want to do, that's what we shall do. But what would, what would we like to do? We need to take control. Actually, ladies, if you agree to this, this will be no problem. All we have to do is hire a locksmith, change the locks, and voila! Florence and her group gain the new keys and complete control. Oh, Clara, this is perfect! <laughs> well, let me, Mary Jones has assured me, whatever you want to do, Clara, Florence, that is what should be done. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? Changing the locks, ma'am, as I've been paid to do. You are what? This is a blatant act of robbery, of theft. I'm Medina de Savala of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. In 1905, Governor Lanham assigned the duties of administering this site to our group. You can deal with the felony charge that will result from your raising and attack on state property. Look, I've been paid to do this, and I was told that we were your purpose. Well, did they show you this? Your action is not only going to earn you a felony as well as assault and battery charges. This site used to be the convent of the mission of San Antonio de Valero. You, sir, will have your soul doubly down to hell if you proceed to burglarize this sacred structure. Look, I've been ordered to do this. You will do this to over my dead body. Have you no respect for maiden either? Will you pilfer from the state? Steal from God? Look, I'm done with this. I'll never do this job.
It's clear the ladies of our esteemed executive committee are going to find some way to occupy the Almond villages. Senator Kinnan is unmistakable. Why does Clara Driscoll remind me of Santa Anna? <laughs> is it because she drinks Bloody Marys? <laughs> the part she does anyway. She raises that flag for prohibition and then drinks it up with her girlfriends on the weekend. What I worry about now is that she will come in and seize all the Alamo artifacts. Driscoll will then deem them ugly because that is her criterion. And then she will sell them off and replace them with her dismal collection of watercolors. I know, I know. Where is Carrie Camp anyways? I think Jenny said she saw her at the Magnar concert the other night. You know what, Adina? That Clara and Florence Eager girl are up to something. Why does this remind me of Louis Moses Rose? The man who candidly admitted that he deserted the army. so fascinates people, I believe. It is the unwritten that strongly appeals these beautiful objects of the Texas past, which you women are preserving. One well, hears a whisper from every object, every stone of our old ruins, landmarks, and spots famed for historic deeds. It calls to us from every relic of the past, but we do not always understand its meaning. I mean, make that almost never. What even is this? Jenny, even a child would ask that question. The answer is not as important as the feeling we so often dismiss. I am convinced that if children can just touch the objects used by noble people, they will in time be inspired by their high ideals. I just wish we even knew if this was a good idea. Hello, operator. This is New York City. Please give me the residence of Cornelia Branch Stone. Hello? Cornelia, this is Clara Driscoll. Oh, Clara, this is the first time I've ever received a call from York. So good to hear from you. Cornelia, I have heard from Carrie Kemp that the artifacts of the Alamo have been robbed. I think it might be the chance that we need to take legal action. This is outrageous. I always suspected that Adina and her clan were just... But I never expected them to be thieves. Well, I can't do anything about it from here. I'm in New York City. I will get the executive committee on this. We will get a court injunction. We will have to take her to court if we have to, but we will get those relics back. Can you do this for me? Don't you lose a wink of sleep over this. We will get this all straightened out. You will have your artifacts back. I will make sure the courts work as fast as possible. It's me, my people, my traditions. 
You know that was good in the soul of my brother Lorenzo. Right. But do you think you have a voice record because of all this? I'm sure I will. But at least her dress girl and the company didn't sick the police on me personally. I know, it's that kind of narrow Texas patriotism that it's just they hate all things old and unfashionable, Spanish and God forbid even Mexican. Like what I just don't understand is why like they just ignore the ten thousand dollars that we not only raised but contributed to the Alamo project. You have asked people to contribute. You have promised to look after that investment. But the law has decided that we have to break our promises. I frankly did not put up the funds for the Schmelzer grocery deal, thinking that we would have a legal battle on our hands just to raise that rat infested warehouse. Oh, you have done so much for us. Such a gratitude. That's a vile woman is nothing but a tipsy coffee addict. I heard rumor that she's even a Roman Catholic nun in disguise. No, I wouldn't put it past her for her to spring at us like some hellcat with its claws extended. There must be some way to drum her and her whole chapter out of the DRT before they just ruin everything at our next state meeting. Oh, our constitution isn't quite ready for this kind of challenge, but we are getting there. Our Narrow Pass I'm sorry I could not make it to the awesome meeting, sister, but to be honest, I'm happy to get out of here for a while. I could not say no to Aunt Joan, who's paying for my way to go see her. There's just so many question marks now. With the death of Uncle Richard? Uncle Richard, what an enigma. Do you think he left us anything? Mom has been selling off all our bonds, and we have no income. It's like we have a sink's worth of water, and it's just running out. I'm so glad you're going to see Aunt Joanne. I'm so embarrassed that I have to ask Mr. Williams for the money to that important convention, but I will have to do that. Adina, if Mr. Williams cares enough to give you or loan you money, if I were you, I would. I'm not going to do that. Of course, we have an issue now. Oh, Henry's bill, oh my, the black the bleak sheep of the family is now out to break us. Adina, what are we going to do? I just hope we don't return from Houston and Austin to find us all evicted from our home. It was upon the long barrack, not the chapel, on that fateful foggy dawn of the 6th of March, 1836, where one heard the constant crack of the rifle, the hiss of the bullets coming fierce and fast. It was here where the heroes died and piled the enemy before them in heaps. It was here on the long barrack that the crimson tide of our brave heroes trickled down and formed puddles shoot deep on these sacred stones. But it's not merely the strength of these stones that makes this wall so precious. It was this blood, ladies, that anointed forever the fortress that makes this wall so precious. Madam Chairman, may I interrupt you? Oh, yes, you may. The speaker has overextended her time. There is simply no evidence that this ungainly pile of mortar and pseudo brick played an important role in the Battle of the Alamo. It is ungainly and needs to be torn down. Ladies, how can be such ingrates? It was thanks to Miss Drisco's contribution that we're even here. She is the savior of the Alamo. We should follow her lead. chapter formed two years before the startup of the DRT. We raised $10,000 for the preservation of the entire San Antonio de Valero mission, now known as the Alamo, the Chapel, and the Long Barrack. Yes, Ms. Driscoll deserves much credit, but we have contributed a good amount of money. We were also the ones who first administered the site, but we are no longer administering the Alamo thanks to a court order and a conspiracy of the Executive Council. Okay, I must say something before y'all accuse one of my friends and a wonderful Texas patriotic woman as a thief. 
Considering how Clara Driscoll wants to tear down the long barracks, how can we, in San Antonio, not be so sure that she would destroy the old relics? We, they bear the traces of old age, which she seems to find so objectionable. We did not steal the relics. They are now returned and are in perfect order and condition. We tried to hide the relics from the destructive vandalism of the Executive Council. Excuse me. I am not destructive. I am here Except looking for you what is best are. in this situation. Except you're you are not. not this is not making you sense. This is not making you sense. Come on, ladies. Back to the story. 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 Come on, lad
since this Ms. Disavala have been inside the former warehouse of the smoke shaker? <clears throat> She's been in there about 12 hours now, but I don't think she'll be much longer. Why not? Well, there are rats in there. Electricity's been cut. She's got no food or water. She'll be out soon enough. Well, why haven't you gone in and get her? Mia doesn't want a scene, and someone could get hurt just going in there. Sir, I believe the prisoner is speaking. She probably wants something. Hill, Texas, fraught with charms unknown, and the creations of Miss, could you say those lines any louder so I, I see can get them down? Immens I would say, why are you copying the ravings of a crazy woman? These are the ravings of a lunatic. But isn't it true that the woman inside is the granddaughter of Lorenzo de Zavala, the first vice president of Texas, and a prominent member of the San Antonio chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas? What she is saying does not sound like ravings to me. It sounds more like a poem. Okay, miss, you can come out now. back, but she gave me this. Hmm, they might have the might, of course, but we have the right. And you know what David Crockett said? Be sure you're right, then go right ahead. Hmm, this whole standoff seems like some kind of replay of our state traditions. <laughs> and then her staking her life on that ugly long bear? I mean, a day day lawbreaker is what they should call her. She might as well be dead if the rats have gotten to her. <laughs> Carrie, I just want to thank you for inviting me to your house during this whole crisis. You've done so much to help Claire and Florence, as well as our new DRT organization, but you have known Adina the longest, so what can we expect from her? Well, she is going to be dangerous since we want to beautify the land around the Alamo Chapel. She just won't let go of the long barret. She truly believes that people fought and died there. And it is a Spanish convent. She even believes she's on a mission from God. That just makes me hate it all the more. To think it was a place where women were put in bondage? in subjugation to a corrupt Mexican institution? Whew. She won't last long, though. One of the men in my life, Samuel Colfax, he's spoken to the garden charge. She has nothing to drink. She won't even last a day. Oh, God, I have nothing to drink, and I'm starting to shake for my unworthy dependence on coffee. Oh, God in Christ, help me. I'm certainly flattered that you think that Dana would listen to me. And I'll try my best, really. But frankly, she hasn't been listening to me. And due to recent events, it confirms what I fear, that she is fixed with determination. I try to shout to her. People think I'm crazy. She's going to die in there. There's nothing we can do to stop it. No. What worries me is that I'm daily dependence on coffee she has. She's told me that she shakes if she doesn't even drink some. How cold it was. Can you imagine how badly she's shaking? We can't go near the entrance, right? They won't let me go near the entrance. I can't even say anything to my daughter. So what if we got a pipe? You know, if you knock against the entrance, she lets in, pour coffee and then water. How can they object to something like that? Probably 
only gives regulations. But you don't know that for sure, do you? Besides, you're not gonna let that creature out of whom die of thirst, are you? Why, well, yes. I mean, no. I've orders not to let anyone come up to the entrance. What is that banner that Mrs. Savala brought into the entrance with? is playing the old Texian chant of the revolution. This flag was raised in Gonzales in 1835. She is, in other words, showing the same kind of defiance as of saying, go ahead, kill me, destroy my heritage. How interesting. So this is like a replay of a Texas revolution. I was so shocked to read it when the San Antonio Express had it. But now it's everywhere. I was so excited when the Express finally got that piece for the Associated Wire Press. And they finally included us in. But now all they want to hear about is some heroin that's... Well, this is ridiculous, alright? The story is already in the Buffalo News, the New York Herald, and the San Francisco Carnival, among others. Deza Bala is just turning our state into a laughing stock. They're calling the story the second siege of the Alamo. Who knew that such a foolish person and story could get into the news? So are you saying that your niece, Adina, and her daughters, the Republic of Texas chapter in San Antonio, actually have a valid reason for not tearing down the old barrack? Governor, your presence right the governor and the Texas legislature gave the keys of the Alamo to the original TRT chapter in San Antonio, edited by Adriana de Zavala. Now, there's been a split innovation, but the TRT itself has not worked out consciously who is in charge. Adriana is still technically a member. The Executive Council and Clara Driscoll have used their influence to fall the San Antonio chapter from administering the grounds. The state needs to intervene to allow time to determine who is in charge and to see who has authority to destroy part of the old fort. Well, many Texans, including Williams, Travis, gave their lives. Governor, you're facing potential charges of gross negligence if you don't face to it, if you fail to act. Listen, Clara Driscoll is a good woman, and I know her family well. And Henry, I'm just not with your niece on this subject. But Texas should protect its citizens, maintain order, and value its treasured artifacts. This whole thing just spread like wildfire. Couldn't you talk to her or do something? There's plenty of states and sites that she could go to. What if we give her a job, something patriotic? She has to have a price. I mean, everybody has a price. This is what I want you to do, sir. I want you to talk to her, because we will get to the bottom of this. If this is some publicity stunt, we will know. Because I'm no longer going to allow this event to tarnish my good name. Her mind is made up. She has no price. Her friends, her mother, me, her uncle, not even enough of a Catholic church can change her mind. If you want to end this crisis, I suggest you get the Attorney General to sign a restraining order and to stop the demolition. My niece and the world for our whole right to be considered. But think, my niece who has published the top an essay on the topic is correct about the importance of the animal, you will want to delay me. You wouldn't want to go down to the government school with history school. They were three quarters of that over to you. I'm sorry, but this pipe trick of yours is going to have to end. Tell your friend to get out. We're wasting police resources on this stupid caper. So you're just going to let a young, patriotic woman of Texas die? You would allow a historic wall of our great republic to fall? Where the one and only William Travis lost his life? What are you, an enemy agent? I have lost enough sleep over your foolish patriotism, and I have had enough of your pipe and your patriotic gawking, which is just another way to evade the law. Officer, stop. I have a restraining order from the governor. What is this? So the rumors are true that Governor Campbell has gotten involved? I mean, it makes sense that he would not want to be known as the governor who surrendered an animal. I just talked to the governor. Here are two copies of the order and my card. Well, yes, 
Someone could tell the young lady that she's attained her end. Hope she's still alright. Adina, you can come out! Remember the Alamo! Remember the Alamo! Remember! You did it, Adina! <laughs> oh Alright, ladies, let's settle down. First, I would like to welcome back Miss Clara Sevier, who is now living in New York City. And I would like to formally congratulate you on your wedding to Mr. Henry Sevier. He's such a young, noble man. And he's always represented our interests well in the Texas house. I heard your wedding reception in, what was it, St. Patrick's Cathedral? Absolutely beautiful. And I also heard you opened up your lovely house in Long Island to a Texas club. Oh my goodness. You two just make such a lovely, patriotic couple. Thank you. It's great to be back in Texas and also to report that Texas patriotism is alive and well in America's largest city. Well, I must catch you up on what's happened. It has taken two years, but we've finally gotten rid of that Miss Adina de Zavala from the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. And the Alamo Mission chapter has now been opened to the... Um, de Jure? De Jure administering body of the Alamo. So, that now means you can raise that hideous structure and make it to your beautiful park you've always dreamed of. Thank you so much, ladies, for everything you've done in my absence. I can assure you that my heart and also my pocketbook <laughs> are always with you. Cornelia, we should tell Claire what's been going on with the governor, though, right? Florence? I've been the one working on the project. Thanks. Clara, the governor, is such an admirer of you, and your husband as well. We've been trying to get this project going, but because of how big the project is and how he's running back for election, we have to put it to the side. But the governor is for women's suffrage and for prohibition. Well, may I remind you, Ms. Kemp, that both majority, excuse me, both majority sentiment in both the Daughters of the Confederacy and the Daughters of the Republic of Texas is against women's suffrage. This often puts what is unclean and even disgraceful in the hands of men. Well, this may be so, but his opponent, Oscar Colquitt, he's from a, a small town in northeast Texas called Pittsburgh. Well, he is against women's suffrage and prohibition, and I'm not so sure he agrees with our plans for the Alamo. Oh, you mean little Oscar? My husband knows of him. He won't give us any trouble. You see, his father and my late husband's, my late husband. They both served in the same Confederacy unit. So if he is indeed elected, he won't give us any trouble. I don't recall that I know him, but I'll send him a letter and with some encouragement inside if he wins. Oh, one more thing, Oscar. I received a message from Ms. Revere. You know the Driscoll Revere clan in South Texas? They'd like your influence to help build a park on the Alamo grounds. The fact that this never happened really is my fault. I had a letter getting started, but I never got around to giving it to the governor. Well, I thought you had given that to me, but you had some question about Ms. Driscoll's moral character? Yes, I may have received something from a Ms. Uh, Sevier. This family was solidly attached to your candidacy last election, not mine. Um, although, uh, there was a teacher involved with the Alamo. Um, she was, I knew her from Terrell, which is near Dallas. She was a school teacher at the same time I was starting a newspaper there. I just, uh, I can't think of her name right now. She was involved in that Alamo standoff. I think you're talking about Miss Adina de Zavala. I remember her because I had some unpleasant dealings with her uncle. <laughs> and you know that her grandfather was the first vice president of Texas. She is very much the activist, but I have been a very big fan because of all the ruckus she's caused so far. Well, Thomas. I'm sure we're going to disagree here as well, but no. The Alamo is a symbol we need to re-examine. Uh, the Mexican Revolution going on right now, in my eyes, is an outrageous sacrilege. You know, uh, thousands are getting killed. Uh, the, the leaders of the revolution are anti-Christian. And uh, bandits are pouring into South Texas, and uh, only to escape the government actions and rival gangs. You know, I think if we can't get the United States military down to our southern borders, 
Texas itself should re-engage militarily with Mexico. Well, Oscar, you're right. Our views do differentiate on this point. Because I have to give you a warning. If you act militarily independent of the United States, things are not going to go well. Good to see you again, Ms. Daisy Paula. I'm, uh, I'm very, very thankful for the support I received from your husbands of the state chapter. It's a pleasure to see you, Governor Coquit. I'm sorry, Ms. Daisy Paula, but we're having the state senators squeeze in today, so we're going to have to keep it relatively brief. We'll be brief. So, uh, Ms. Daisy Paula, why do you need terrible? I thought that the need for public education on a grand scale was much more pressing than the need to teach in any particular school. Yeah. I admire you, Ms. Daisy Paula. I know you care about the Alamo as a symbol very much as I do. But uh, we reviewed your letter and we realized you no longer administer the Alamo. What can I do for you? Oh, I risk my life not to control the Alamo but to preserve it. Everyone thinks that the chapel is alone among the Alamo, but it is a far greater structure that historically included the long buried. It is a wall when you try to start defending, and it needs to be preserved. The purpose of this hearing is to determine for the good of the governor and the people of Texas what should be done with the so-called long bear. We will begin testimony from the state chapter of the Daughters of Republic of Texas. Distinguished Governor Cloquet and friends of Alamo, I am shocked to report that the savior of Alamo, Miss Clara Driscoll's savior, is not here yet. Her train was delayed. What I will do is give you a history of the Alamo as told to me by the same remarkable historian Clara Drisco Savior. What is known today as the Alamo dates all the way back to 1718 when a Spanish explorer named Martin, and I won't say his last name because I cannot pronounce it, um, came and set a priest to work on converting Indians to Christianity in present-day San Antonio. Work on the chapel of the mission began in 1744 with the laying of the cornerstone, um, but the gathering of good stone made the work slow, and it was only finished 14 years later. Thus, the beautiful chapel we now know as the Alamo appeared in 1758. This was until the roof cracked in 1762 and it caved in. Thus, to this day, we have no blueprints for the hideous structure owned by the Snelzer Grocery, and no reason to suspect it was part of the original site. <clears throat> if you look at the long barrack and the uh, quality of the stone, it's very venerable. Um, when do you believe the barrack was built? Well, um, I just wish Claire was here. This is ridiculous. We're pretty sure it was built, um, well, by some sort that was before the smelter. Well, if the state chapter has no more useful information. Oh, there's, there's, stay here, the elbow just in time. Look, I don't know what's been said, but I have something very important to show all of you. You see here how the long barrack suffocates the lovely chapel? Do you see how the long barrack appears differently in style from the chapel? Yes, there was a convent in San Antonio, but it would not have been such an ugly structure placed so close to the chapel. Yes, there was a barricade near the chapel, but it was a mere matter of improvisation. This is, by contrast, an ungainly brick monster that appeared after the Battle of the Alamo, during the days when San Antonio still had much to fear from a Mexican counterattack, which happened, and from de excuse me, deprivations from the Comanche. Do you have any other evidence you wish to present, Ms. Sevier? I would like to say one thing. Texas needs its Alamo. If Schmelzer had sold his building to the amusement syndicate, the crumbling chapel would have become another appendage to a new commercial monstrosity that would have replaced the hideous Schmelzer building. I laid a $75,000 check on the table 
and swallowed a $7,500 option fee to save the integrity of the Alamo Chapel. I am appalled that the same women who were so happy to receive my help in 1905 have since become insensitive to my dream to beautify this hallowed place. I am appalled with the ideas that I am hearing, that everything from the old Spanish period must be preserved. I am appalled that when our true goal to properly memorialize the brave heroes of the Texas Revolution is so brutally thrust aside. Okay, thank you so very much, Ms. Amir, for coming here all the way from New York City. And indeed, all you ladies from the state here. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, let's go to the original chapter of the San Antonio DRT. Governor Colquitt and esteemed participants of this hearing, I would like to present to the governor and the secretary copies of a letter in the state archive by engineer Green B. Jameson to Samuel Houston, commander of the Texas armies on the 18th of January, 1826, a good month before the famous siege of the Alamo. This letter provides a plat of the fort used by the defenders that has the same exact three to one rectangular proportions of the long barrack. Jameson also discusses the placement of an 18 pound cannon on these walls. These walls, like the current ones of the long barrack, were obviously well built to hold a cannon at the top. Do we have any evidence, Ms. De Zavala, that this was a former convent? Yes, Governor. I have an ancient letter provided me through the Catholic Diocese of San Antonio by one Father Juan Morphy. He writes about the two-story limestone walls. This precisely describes the long barrack, the first two stories of which are much better made. A third story to the long barrack was added at later at some point, probably to stop the Comanche. No, no, no. We know that San Antonio was an absolute wreck after the Spanish period. And we also know that the infighting between the Mexican Revolution decimated the town. There was a terrible flood in 1819, and they were robbed by the Comanche. I refuse to believe any documents written by the Catholic Church that prepared to say that they were left to be crumbled or is left to be washed away before 1836. What I demand to know is that who is going to give the eyewitness account that saying that the fort was actually held by William Travis and its Texas heroes back for 1836. Thank you, Mrs. Stone. We are now anticipating a witness I would now like to introduce. I would like to go to the podium. One J.W. Darlington, perhaps the oldest. He is 93 years old, so let's show him our appreciation and our best efforts at patience. In 1842, I was a young man in San Antonio. It was six years after Santa Ana had besieged the city. The long barrack and the chapel were, were both there. They were surrounded by verdant cottonwood trees which stood as their only sentinels. Inside the walls of these buildings, they were all black. And I was told it was because of the black suit of the Texas soldiers that had been burned by the Mexican army because the wood was not charred. The long barrack was used in the battle. And this is where the Mexicans breached the walls. Thank you so much, Mr. Darlington, for making the effort to be with us today. How fascinating to have you. I wish we had more to develop a transcript, though. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about living back then is uh, we didn't have any medical doctors. And when I was little, um, I had a strange disease that caused me to have to eat dirt three times a day. It's a good thing my little brother told me that. start off by saying I want to particularly thank you for all being here, you know, particularly Adina Zavala for the bright light of uh, all your research you've applied to the subject. <laughs> and, um, I know we all have our preferences. And much about the Alamo remains a dark mystery. You know, I mean, how did Davy Crockett die? Uh, how many soldiers were there exactly in the fort? Uh, how many were foreigners? Yeah, but, though we still grapple in this, in this still in the darkness, you know, one person has elucidated much for me, and this is Tadina Dezaval. I want to thank you for your letters and 
the <laughs> and we're finding Mr. Darlington, who uh, we have detained before the meeting, is the long-term resident. Ms. Adina De Zavala claims him to be. You know, I would also like to thank the uh, State DRT for the uh, photograph and for the remarkable amount of work they have done in preserving a larger uh, Alamo complex. You know. Ms. A was not around in 18, 19, 1905, but I thank you for the gracious act and your patriotic intention. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Thank you all for being here. Another terrible article. No wonder Claire was so upset. It would have helped if she took an earlier train. She was our expert. A new culprit would do us harm. The demon Ron Pusher is so drunk that he has a state spending over $5,000 on the lawn barrack. He does have a mind of his own, don't he? What depresses me the most about this whole situation is how that lawbreaker, Adina De Zavala, has gotten her way in things. I mean, she is the most Amazonian woman I have ever had to contend with. It is a miracle that the Alamo still includes its venerable port. That certainly is the truth, but rather than use this beverage such as this to propose a toast to God, I would like to propose a toast to Adina, but at the very least, to remind us how lucky we are to be both a Texan and an American. Yes, let's all toast to my daughter, who worked to save the Alamo and save our heritage. Adina De Zavala died in 1955 after authoring several books and articles on Texas history. She worked on several projects after being severed from the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, preserving Spanish mission sites, encouraging the proliferation of China roses that her grandfather Lorenzo first brought to Texas, and promoting the naming of Texas schools after Texas heroes. She remained single throughout her life. In her last years, her vision declined because of cataracts, and she ended life in a wheelchair. She deeded all $100,000 of her estate, mainly held in property, to the Incarnate Word Academy, a Roman Catholic college. Clara and Henry Severe left New York for Austin in 1914. They became the Vanguard Jazz Age Couple of Texas. They initiated the Austin American Statesman. Their home, Laguna Gloria, became a destination for influential visitors. In the 1930s, Henry championed Franklin Roosevelt and gained an ambassadorship to Chile. But Clara supported her fellow South Texan, Vice President John Nance Garner. In 1937, the couple divorced, and Clara discarded the name Severe to be known again as Clara Driscoll. Newspapers still called her the savior of the Alamo. She moved back to Corpus Christi, where she, like her father before her, continued as an influential civic leader. Clara died in 1945. 
Governor Lanham and State Representative Sam Ely Johnson both leveraged the generosity of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas to become minor saviors of the Alamo. Sam Ely Johnson was the father of later President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Lanham was one of several early governors who spent at least part of their lives in the area of Northeast Texas between the Red and Sabine Rivers. Others included Oren Roberts and Oscar Colquitt featured in this film, along with Hardin Runnels, Pendleton Murrah, Jim Hogg, and Charles Culberson. Oscar Colquitt failed in his effort to become a senator in 1916. He became a Dallas business leader and died in 1940. His Pittsburgh Gazette, now the oldest business in Pittsburgh, perseveres today as the key news source in Camp County. Driscoll's view that the long barrack itself impaired the beauty of the chapel drove her to punish Colquitt for his decision to save the Long Barrack. She and her allies did convince Lieutenant Governor William Harding Mays of Brown County to destroy the Long Barrack's second story and detach it from the chapel when Colquitt was on a business trip. Driscoll also worked overtime for Colquitt's defeat in 1916. Though shortened, the Long Barrack remains an outstanding feature of the Alamo today thanks to Adina de Zavala. Today the site also includes three additional modern buildings, sporting a gift shop, an amphitheater, and exhibit. The Daughters of the Republic of Texas never lost their reputation for internal feuding. Part of their problem involved the onerous demands involved with administering one of the world's major tourist attractions. Partially as a result, they were permanently divested of their right to control the Alamo in 2015. Governor Rick Perry tried to keep it in their hands, but later Governor and then Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott made a critical investigation of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. Perry signed the bill that ended the administrative lease of the DRT over the Alamo. Today, the state of Texas both owns and operates the site. More particularly, the Texas Land Commission, headed by George P. Bush, son of presidential candidate Jeb Bush.